Joanna Staten had been born with what they call a silver spoon in her mouth. It only seemed that the spoon had been shoved somewhere else, for Joanna was a spoiled brat. Well, I almost had to wait. With her husband, Grant Staten III, she'd traveled on a yacht, yet the boat broke down, and they had to stay in Elk Cove for a while. Poor Joanna became insanely bored in that godforsaken land and decided to redecorate her closet. To do this, they hired a local carpenter, Dean Prophet, better known as Snake Pliskin. He was a regular guy, a hard worker. Joanna isn't thrilled with his presence, but she has to put up with him. Try not to touch anything. Oh, I won't. While he was making shelves for her shoes, Joanna was sunbathing on the deck. Walking past him in her swimsuit, she showed off a small birthmark on her butt. It was odd that Dean had noticed it at all, given the view he'd seen. When he finished and showed the result to the customer, she made a wry face and declared that her shoes weren't worthy of standing in a closet of mongrel oak. She wished for noble cedar. She wouldn't pay for this piece of junk. Dean was willing to remake the closet, but on the condition that he would be paid for the work first. Until then, he was going to stay on the boat. Joanna settled the matter in her usual manner. She threw the carpenter into the water with his tools. When the boat was put out to sea again, Joanna called her mother and complained about the obnoxious workman. He had the nerve to call her spoiled and tell her she was pissed out of boredom. Meanwhile, Dean returns home and is greeted there by the principal of the school his four sons will soon be attending. She has come to meet them, and the boys welcome her by wrapping toilet paper around her and wanting to set her on fire. Dean's wife had died three years before, and now the boys lacked female care and love. In the evening, Joanna found that she had forgotten her wedding ring on the deck. Grant refused to fetch it, so she had to do it herself. The boat rocked, and she went overboard. No one heard her screams, and Joanna started drifting toward the shore. She was fished out by garbage collectors. As a result of being in the water for so long, or maybe from hitting the stern of their boat, Joanna's memory was lost. She was admitted to a psychiatric hospital. The doctors promised that her memory would come back, and it would happen suddenly. In the meantime, she had to stay there. What had happened was announced on television, and Grant saw the story. He came to the clinic to make sure his wifey didn't remember anything. Then he said he didn't know her and went off to have fun with the good time girls. Dean saw the story about Joanna, too. He had the crazy idea of telling the doctors that they were married and taking the spoiled billionaire home. Dean figured that Joanna would pay for the closet he'd made in about a month. She'd have to cook, clean, do laundry, and babysit. At the hospital, his wife-to-be pissed everyone off. Stop staring at me! Eat your checkers. The clinic staff was ready to dump her off to the first person they could find, but they still needed proof that Dean and Joanna were married. So Dean says she has a small birthmark on her buttock. When Joanna checked it out, it really was there. She was sent home. From then on, her name was Annie. Dean was handed his wife's belongings, panties with her initials on them, and photographs that had been taken right after Joanna was found. When he brought her in, Joe reasonably determined that she couldn't have lived in that pigsty. Yet her fake sons recognized Mommy from the doorstep, and Mrs. Prophet started to believe that she had indeed come home. The first thing Dean did was get the missus to boil a whole chicken and make a side dish for it. It didn't turn out so well, but at least he didn't have to cook it himself. When she got burned, the boys poured fire extinguishers over her. They did everything they could to make the poor billionaire's life a living hell. In the evening, Dean went out to meet a friend, Billy Pratt. And when he returned, he pretended to be drunk and acted like he wanted to get on top of his wife. She was frightened and had to sleep on the couch in the living room. The roof was leaking, and Joe fell asleep with ladles in her hands to keep the water from dripping on her. She had a wonderful dream where she was rich again and leading a beautiful life. In the morning, however, that life ended. She had to get the children ready for school and take care of the household when Dean left. While the family was away, Joanna was boldly attacked by a washing machine and then had to wrestle with a chainsaw while destroying the decor of their yard. When Dean returned, all she could do was sit in her chair and stare off into the distance. Only cold rainwater could bring her out of her stupor. Dean just happened to have a suitable barrel outside. Soon after, Joanna decided to finally make sure that she was from this family. Come on, honey, you gotta admit, you've lost a lot of weight. She began looking for old photographs of her and Dean together, but he said those pictures might have been lost during the move. In the evening, Dean drove to Billy's house to get him and his wife to take commemorative pictures. As he got out of the car, he moved Joanna's panties from the envelope to the glove compartment. After getting the result of the Photoshop, Dean showed the pictures to his fictitious wife, and she finally believed that this was her husband indeed. While Joanne was mastering the role of the housewife, Grant had all the fun. When Joe's mother called, he asked Andrew to tell her he wasn't on the boat. One day Billy came to visit Dean, 
and they decided to mock the rich girl. They made her bring them beer and dessert. Dean's kids weren't left out either. They put glue on the plates, and Joanna's hands got stuck to them. She couldn't stand it. She grabbed a hose and splashed water all over the male group. It turned out to be a lot of fun. Joanna felt like the boss of the house. Now she took care of the children, did the cleaning and laundry, and did it all without disgust. When she was called to school because the boys were pretending to be sick and refusing to write a test, Joanna reprimanded the teacher. Her children were really sick. At home, she put ointment on the rash and then tried to get Dean involved in parenting, and they fought over it. When Dean returned at night, he realized that he had been rude to her and decided to apologize. That's when it turned out that Joanna was also sick. Then Dean picked her up and carried her. No, not to the water barrel, but to the bedroom. He wanted Joanna to sleep on a soft bed. From then on, he became a caring husband, and they lived in perfect harmony. Dean and Billy planned to start their own business, a mini golf course. To attract more customers, Joe advised them to put copies of the world's landmarks on it, and the friends liked the idea. The laborious task of preparing the presentation began. Dean needed money to build the site, and he was going to get it from investors. In the evening, Joanna and the children drew posters for the presentation, and Dean left for the bowling alley. At least, that's what he said. Realizing her husband had left the bowling ball at home, Joanna went looking for him. She found him at the night job. Dean was loading bags of fertilizer. Soon after, he and Billy met with investors and got money to build a golf course. Construction began, and the friends took part in it. Joanna, meanwhile, was babysitting. She taught the youngest to read and kept an eye on the others to get their homework done on time. The boys liked her so much that they asked her not to leave them. Dean started feeling a twinge of conscience. He realized he had gone too far and had to tell his wife the truth. Yet when he tried to start a conversation about her past, Joanna interrupted him and told him she knew about his part-time job as a loader. She was so kind and caring that Dean couldn't tell her who she really was. He lied that it was her birthday and took her to a restaurant to celebrate. After dancing, they went outside, and Joanna asked why the steamer was humming three times. Dean told her the legend of the poor fisherman Arturo and his rich lover Katerina. When they were prohibited from being together, Arturo promised to hum three times when he returned to port. Katerina, at this point, threw herself into the water and swam toward him. However, the fog was rather thick, and she could not find her beloved. Arturo jumped into the water, and they both swam toward each other. Legend has it they drowned but met on the seabed. Joanna enjoyed the story. She had a wonderful evening, and when she and Dean returned home, they got physical. In the morning, Dean surprised her with a new washing machine. Joanna's mother began to worry about her daughter and told Grant to find her immediately. He had to interrupt his vacation and return to Elk Cove. The happy couple was getting ready for the opening of the mini golf course that day. They were driving Dean's car, and Joanna happened to find her panties in the glove compartment. Only she thought her husband was cheating on her and made a scene. Dean told the truth that the panties were hers, and they weren't married at all. But the kids refused to back him up, and Billy blurted out that his mistress had left her underwear in the glove compartment. Joanna calmed down, and they drove to the opening. Everything went great, but when they returned home, Grant's limousine was waiting for them. Joanna immediately recognized her spouse, and a moment later, her memory came back to her. She remembered Dean, too. Realizing she had been fooled, she drove off with Grant. There's nothing inside that's mine. The boys ran after the limo and called out for their mother, but Joanna plugged her ears and tried not to listen to their screams. Back on the boat, she realized that this was not the life she wanted anymore. Joanna had changed. Now she served guests and drank beer. She even became friends with the boat crew and with Andrew, who was her servant. He was the one who gave her the idea to go back to Dean. Joanna turned the boat around and headed for Elk Cove. The sons urged Dean to chase after their new mother, but he was sure she was fine in her respectable world. On second thought, however, he decided to follow her. Billy made arrangements with the Coast Guard, and they set out on their boat. Upon learning that his wife had rebelled, Grant took control of the boat, but Joanna was able to stop it. At that moment, she heard three honks and realized it was her Arturo who had come for her. As she ran out on the deck, however, the Coast Guard boat turned around. They'd been informed of the poachers and couldn't do any more foolish nonsense. Then Dean jumped into the water and swam toward Joanna. She jumped in too. A moment later, Grant was in the water too, but Andrew threw him there. Dean and Joanna met in the middle of the ocean and kissed. When they were lifted onto the boat, Joanna told them how rich she was, and the boys began making gift lists. Joanna wanted a gift from Dean too, a little daughter. And that's where the movie ends. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to watch more movie recaps videos like this.